The great Buddha once said, The mind is everything. What you think, you become. A young Buddhist monk named Dharma was curious about the meaning of this quote and wanted to learn how to use his mind properly. He had heard of a Zen master named Hike who lived in a remote mountain temple and was renowned for his wisdom and insight. Dharma decided to visit Hike and ask him to teach him the secrets of the mind and how to attain enlightenment. He packed his belongings and set off on his journey. After several days of walking, he reached the foot of the mountain where Hike's temple was located. He climbed up the steep and narrow path, admiring the beauty of nature and the tranquility of the surroundings. He felt a sense of awe and reverence as he approached the temple gate. He knocked on the door and waited. After a while, he heard a voice from inside asking, Who is it? Dharma replied, I am Dharma, a Buddhist monk from the nearby monastery. I have come to seek your guidance, Master Hike. Please accept me as your disciple and teach me the way of the mind. There was a moment of silence, and then the voice said, Why do you want to learn the way of the mind? Dharma answered, Because I want to understand the truth of reality and achieve enlightenment, Master Hike. The voice responded, Enlightenment is not something you can achieve by learning or understanding. It is something you have to realize by yourself. Go away and do not disturb me. Dharma was shocked and disappointed. He had traveled so far and hoped to receive Hike's teachings, but he was rejected without even seeing his face. He felt a surge of anger and frustration in his mind. He was about to turn away and leave when he heard the voice again. However, if you are sincere and determined, I will give you a chance. You have to complete three test tasks that I will assign to you each one testing your mental abilities and challenging your preconceptions. If you succeed, I will accept you as my disciple and teach you the way of the mind. If you fail, you have to leave and never come back. Do you agree? The voice said. Dharma hesitated for a moment, wondering what kind of tasks Hike would give him and whether he could accomplish them. He also felt a bit of fear and doubt in his mind. However, he quickly overcame his hesitation and said, Yes, Master Hike, I agree. Please tell me the first task. Very well, the first task is to meditate for an hour without moving or thinking about anything. Go to the meditation hall and sit on the cushion. I will come and check on you after an hour. If you move or think, you fail. If you do not move or think, you pass. Begin now, the voice said. Dharma nodded and went to the meditation hall. He found a cushion and sat on it in the lotus position. He closed his eyes and tried to empty his mind of all thoughts and sensations. He focused on his breathing and tried to be aware of the present moment. He thought that this task would be easy, as he had practiced meditation for many years and was familiar with the techniques. He was confident that he could sit still and quiet his mind for an hour. However, he soon realized that it was not as easy as he thought. As he sat there, he began to feel various sensations in his body. The itchiness of his skin, the stiffness of his muscles, the pain in his legs, the hunger in his stomach, the thirst in his throat, and the sweat on his forehead. He tried to ignore them and focus on his breathing, but they became more and more intense and distracting. He also began to hear various sounds in his ears, the wind blowing, the birds chirping, the insects buzzing, the water flowing, and the leaves rustling. He tried to block them out and focus on his breathing, but they became more and more loud and annoying. He also began to see various images in his eyes, the colors of the rainbow, the shapes of the clouds, the faces of his friends, the scenes of his past, and the visions of his future. He tried to erase them and focus on his breathing, but they became more and more vivid and enticing. He also began to have various thoughts in his mind, thoughts about his life, his goals, his problems, his doubts, his fears, and his desires. He tried to stop them and focus on his breathing, but they became more and more persistent and compelling. He felt a strong urge to move, to scratch, to drink, to eat, to look, to speak, to act, and to think. He felt restless, bored, anxious, 
angry, sad, and confused. He felt like he was trapped in a cage of his own body and mind. He wondered how much time had passed and how much longer he had to endure. He wondered if Hike was watching him and what he would say. He wondered if he could pass this task or if he would fail. He was about to give up and break his meditation when he remembered the words of the Buddha. The mind is everything. What you think, you become. He realized that he was creating his own suffering by attaching to his sensations, sounds, images and thoughts. He realized that he was not his body, his senses, his emotions or his thoughts. He realized that he was the one who was observing and experiencing them. He realized that he had the power to choose how to react to them. He realized that he could let them go and be free from them. He decided to change his attitude and approach. He decided to accept his sensations, sounds, images and thoughts as they were, without judging, resisting or clinging to them. He decided to observe them with curiosity, compassion and detachment, without identifying, reacting or following them. He decided to use them as objects of his meditation, without losing, forgetting or escaping from them. He relaxed his body and mind and opened his awareness. He embraced his sensations, sounds, images and thoughts as part of his reality and his experience. He watched them with interest, kindness and wisdom without being disturbed, annoyed or tempted by them. He learned from them and grew from them without being limited, defined or controlled by them. He felt a sense of peace, joy and freedom in his mind. He felt a connection, harmony and unity with his reality. He felt gratitude, love and compassion for his experience. He felt clarity, insight and understanding of his mind. He smiled and continued his meditation without moving or thinking about anything. After an hour, Hike came to the meditation hall and saw Dharma sitting on the cushion, still and calm. He was impressed by his perseverance and concentration. He walked up to him and tapped him on the shoulder. Dharma opened his eyes and bowed to Hike. He felt a sense of accomplishment and relief. Hike smiled and said, You have done well, Dharma. You have passed the first task. You have learned to meditate without moving or thinking about anything. You have learned to accept, observe, and let go of your sensations, sounds, images and thoughts. You have learned to use your mind as a tool of awareness and understanding. You have taken the first step towards enlightenment, but there is still more to learn and practice. Are you ready for the second task? Dharma nodded and said, Yes, Master Hike, I am ready. Please tell me the second task. Very well. The second task is to solve a riddle that I will give you without using logic or words. You have to answer me with a gesture, a sound, or an action that expresses the essence of the riddle. If you answer correctly, you pass. If you answer incorrectly, you fail. Do you understand? Hike said. Dharma nodded and said, Yes, Master Hike, I understand. Please give me the riddle. Hike looked at Dharma and said, The riddle is this. What is the sound of one hand clapping? Dharma was puzzled by the riddle. He had heard of it before, but he did not know the answer. He wondered how he could solve it without using logic or words. He wondered what kind of gesture, sound, or action could express the sound of one hand clapping. He tried to think of possible solutions, but he could not find any that made sense. He tried to clap with one hand, but he only made a faint noise. He tried to snap his fingers, but he only made a clicking sound. He tried to slap his thigh, but he only made a thudding sound. He tried to wave his hand, but he only made a whooshing sound. He tried to whistle, but he only made a hissing sound. He realized that none of these sounds matched the sound of one hand clapping. He realized that he was trying to imitate the sound of two hands clapping with one hand. He realized that he was missing the point of the riddle. He realized that he was using his mind as a tool of logic and language, not as a tool of intuition and creativity. He decided to change his attitude and approach. He decided to stop thinking and start feeling. He decided to listen to his heart, not to his head. 
He decided to use his mind as a tool of awareness and understanding, not as a tool of analysis and explanation. He relaxed his body and mind and opened his awareness. He closed his eyes and focused on his breathing. He felt the energy flowing in his body and the vibrations in his hand. He felt the connection between his hand and the air, the sound and the silence, the movement and the stillness. He felt the harmony between his hand and the universe, the sound and the reality, the movement and the moment. He smiled and opened his eyes. He looked at Hike and raised his hand. He made a gesture, a sound, or an action that expressed the sound of one hand clapping. Hike saw Dharma's gesture, sound, or action, and nodded. He was impressed by his intuition and creativity. He recognized that Dharma had solved the riddle without using logic or words. He understood that Dharma had expressed the sound of one hand clapping. Hike smiled and said, You have done well, Dharma. You have passed the second task. You have learned to solve a riddle without using logic or words. You have learned to listen to your heart, not to your head. You have learned to use your mind as a tool of intuition and creativity. You have taken the second step towards enlightenment. But there is still more to learn and practice. Are you ready for the third and final task? Dharma nodded and said, Yes, Master Hike. I am ready. Please tell me the third and final task. Very well. The third and final task is to face your greatest fear and overcome it without running away or resisting. You have to confront the source of your fear and transform it into something positive. If you succeed, you pass. If you fail, you leave. Do you understand? Hike said. Dharma nodded and said, Yes, Master Hike. I understand. Please show me the source of my fear. Hike looked at Dharma and said, The source of your fear is yourself. Follow me to the mirror room and see for yourself. Dharma followed Hike to the mirror room. He entered the room and saw a large mirror on the wall. He looked at the mirror and saw his own reflection. He felt a sudden shock and fear in his mind. He saw himself as he really was, with all his flaws, faults, and failures. He saw his doubts, his fears, his desires, and his attachments. He saw his ignorance, his delusion, his ego, and his suffering. He saw his past, his present, and his future. He saw his karma, his samsara, and his nirvana. He felt a strong urge to run away or resist. He felt like he was facing his worst enemy and his greatest obstacle. He felt like he was facing his own death and his own rebirth. He wondered how he could face his fear and overcome it. He wondered how he could confront himself and transform himself. He remembered the words of the Buddha. The mind is everything. What you think, you become. He realized that he was creating his own fear by rejecting himself and his reality. He realized that he was not his reflection, but the one who was reflecting. He realized that he had the power to change himself and his reality. He realized that he could face his fear and overcome it. He decided to change his attitude and approach. He decided to accept himself and his reality as they were, without judging, resisting, or clinging to them. He decided to love himself and his reality with compassion, forgiveness, and generosity. He decided to use himself and his reality as tools of awareness and understanding, not as sources of fear and suffering. He relaxed his body and mind and opened his awareness. He smiled at himself and his reality in the mirror. He made a gesture, a sound, or an action that expressed his acceptance, love, and transformation. Hike saw Dharma's gesture, sound, or action, and nodded. He was impressed by his courage and wisdom. He recognized that Dharma had faced his fear and overcome it. He understood that Dharma had confronted himself and transformed himself. Hike smiled and said, You have done well, Dharma. You have passed the third and final task. You have learned to face your fear and overcome it. You have learned to accept, love, and transform yourself and your reality. You have learned to use your mind as a tool of awareness and understanding. You have taken the third and final step towards enlightenment. 
Congratulations, Dharma. You have become my disciple and learned the way of the mind. Dharma bowed to Hike and thanked him for his guidance and teachings. He felt a sense of joy and gratitude in his mind. He hoped that he had passed the third and final task. Hike hugged Dharma and said, You are welcome, Dharma. You have done a great job. You have passed all the tasks and learned the way of the mind. You have become a true Zen master. But remember, this is not the end of your journey but the beginning. There is still more to learn and practice. There is still more to realize and share. There is still more to live and enjoy. Do not forget the words of the Buddha. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Dharma nodded and said, Yes, Master Hike, I will remember. Thank you for everything, Master Hike. I will follow your example and continue my practice and share my insights with others. I will live in the present moment and enjoy the beauty and wonder of life. Hike smiled and said, You are welcome, Dharma. I am proud of you and happy for you. I hope you enjoyed this journey and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel where you can discover the hidden treasures of wisdom. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, stay wise and stay curious.